Kristen Denny Chambers, clarinetist, composer, and founder of Clarinet Playground. This is video number 22 out of 40, going through all of the etudes in Finger Fitness Etudes Book 2, with some tips and tricks to help you as you get going with this music. This one is for One Red Balloon. One Red Balloon is dedicated to David Safadin, another wonderful connection that I've made over the last few years during the pandemic and online through our online communities. David is the principal clarinetist of the New York Pops and is a New York City-based freelance musician known for his lyrical clarinet playing and engaging teaching style. He has played with the Metropolitan Opera, American Ballet Theater, the American Symphony Orchestra, the New York City Opera, the Knights, the Philharmonic Orchestra of the Americas, Albany Symphony, Princeton Symphony, Stanford Symphony, and internationally with the Hong Kong Philharmonic. Mr. Sapiden's recording of the Brahms Sonata for clarinet and piano is available on all streaming platforms. David considers teaching central to his work as an artist. He's on the faculty of Montclair State University, the Manus School of Music, and Kinhaven Music School. As a pedagogue, he has led master classes across the country and teaches clarinetists from first grade to graduate school. David has a very playful spirit about him, which has shown up even more as he has become a father. His little boy is the cutest thing in the world. They're so cute together when they're playing, especially when he shares videos of them at the park. So I imagine them walking hand in hand down a sidewalk, watching this red balloon floating away in the sky. And from the two different perspectives, from the dad perspective and from the little kid. Let's take a look at the music. At the bottom of each page, you'll find one or two practice tips. For this one, we have the final note represents the balloon popping in the distance. So we can achieve that effect with either a really short staccato, like a dry staccato, or a slap tongue, if you can do a slap tongue. Now, the larger the instrument you are playing, the easier that is to do. So the larger the reed, the easier it is to do. So a B-flat clarinet and E-flat clarinet, it's a little bit tougher to do a slap tongue. But basset clarinet, alto clarinet, bass clarinet, anything lower with a larger reed will get easier and easier. Watch some videos on how to slap tongue. I know Michael Lowenstern has one. I'm sure there's a few others out there. Just search that for ear spasm music on YouTube and any other resources that you can find on slap tonguing. At the top of each page, you'll find two finger drills. For this one, we're doing low F to B natural and then low F to C. Now, when I originally wrote this, the intention was for the low Fs to be on the right side. But, you know, you can always do an extra challenge for yourself and play those on the left side for left F. So for my original intention, we have right side low F up to middle finger B. And we do have to coordinate that well because we're going from here to the middle. So we have to lift this finger and this finger and the pinky all together. And then we have low F to C. And that I just think about opening a hinge, making that movement nice and smooth like a hinge. Be sure to spend a really good amount of time on these finger drills. We want to be able to play them very smoothly with lots of confidence because this is what's folded directly into the music. For the style and character of One Red Balloon, this is a slow waltz. It's drifting, it's detached. I mean, really just imagine a balloon floating up in the sky, drifting and detached. So you can also imagine the joy of watching this red balloon floating off into the distance but also combined with sadness because you lost your balloon. Oh no, but you get to enjoy it flying in the sky. So it's this great combination of sadness and happiness. So in this main opening theme, that's where we're really going to see this aimless drifting, this floating character, the detached character. Here's the very beginning. <laughs> We have a major shift in character in the middle section called with movement. So here I try to imagine like a storm or a cloud or a big gust of wind is blowing that balloon all different directions now. So now we have some freedom to move forward. We're going to show these accents and have a little bit different character in this section. <laughs> Now we'll take a look at the rhythm for this etude. Really, we're looking at some very fundamental counting. We do have some dotted rhythms, but mostly we have quarter notes, half notes, and constant eighth notes. So if we look at measure one, we have the quarter note, half note theme. And then in measure three, we have the first dotted quarter note. And that comes back quite frequently. When you have the dotted quarter note, you can subdivide, I think about three eighth notes on a dotted quarter note. And it really helps me to feel exactly where that eighth note needs to fit after the dotted quarter note. I'll play measure one, this first example starting at measure one, with subdivision and then without. Mm -hmm. 
At measure 35, we have just constant eighth notes, one te, two te, three te, or one and two and three and, however is more comfortable for you to count. At measure 66, we have the only occurrence of 16th notes, and it's right there at the beginning of the measure on the B natural, C, B natural. So we're just counting one te ta two, three, one, or one and a two, three, one. And instead of thinking it as being exactly precise, I think of it more decorative, almost like a little turn or something. So there's some flexibility there. Now, if we look beyond just plain rhythms that we see on the page, we have a lot of tempo shifts. We have some slowing down. We have some moving forward. So in essence, that kind of messes with how we play the rhythms because we're going to be going faster and slower in certain places. And we need to think about the pacing with our counting. So as you slow down, I think of slowing down the subdivision. One, two, three, one, te, two, te, three, te. And that subdivision really helps me to slow down in a nice organic way so it doesn't feel sudden or abrupt. So if we look at measure 31, we have this retard leading to the fermata. 46, we have another version of that. And then at 60, we have the molto retardando. And that's really the one that we want to take the most amount of time. So some of them you can do hold a little bit less, slow down a little bit less. Some of you, you can slow down a little bit more and you can kind of insert your own variety of where you feel which one should hang out longer and which one should move along to keep the, the music going. take a look at some areas for focus. So we have some really long phrases, especially in this opening theme. And you may be very tempted to emphasize all of the beat ones because that's what we typically do in a waltz. But pace yourself and allow yourself to play these really long phrases. So we want to avoid something like this. <laughs> before there are several retards leading to fermatas and you can treat those differently each time. Uh, we've already talked about them so I just wanted to reiterate that. Take your time to really plan out how you want to treat each one of those. And here at the bottom we want to bring out the added descending notes between the pedal F starting in measure 25. This is a really interesting quirk in this etude and it's a little bit of a two against three which I find very interesting and it's really fun to play. At measure 33, when we have the with movement section, there's a lot going on. We have staccato notes, we have accents, we have these big hairpin shapes. So we wanna really think about that, plan ahead, maybe practice it a little bit slower at first so that you can get all of these elements to come through. <laughs> At measure 37, we have a pedal group with moving notes on each beat one, and those moving notes are all staccato too. So we wanna practice bringing out those beat ones, and then the pedal group, which is the same group of notes that keeps coming back, the F, G, A flat, G, F, that's less important. So we wanna bring out those beat ones, plus we have this big shape that we have to do. So there's a lot going on there too. Take your time with that. <laughs> In measure 48, we run into quite the finger twister. We're back to the main theme really, but it's a little bit more decorated with these neighbor groups or neighbor tones, whether it's a chromatic neighbor or a diatonic neighbor. But really the big fight is between whether we're playing middle B or fork B. Luckily the pattern stays relatively consistent, so it's a little bit easy to navigate through once you figure it out. But let's walk through that so it makes sense. So we start with low F, middle B, 
C, fork B, first finger A sharp, back to fork, up for D, and then C, D, C, A, G, F, middle, C, fork, first finger A sharp, fork for the B, D. And that repeats quite a few times. <laughs> Then when you get down to measure 66 and you have those 16th notes, be flexible, be creative with that, let it sound different each time and that would be okay. And then we want this really fun balloon pop at the very end. Like I said earlier, you can try with a slap tongue or a very dry staccato. No matter what you do, be sure to observe that breath mark right before the last measure. It gives it some space to really give the balloon some time to pop. For those of you with low C instruments, be sure to check out page 56 for the low C version of this etude. Always learn the original first as a rule, and then you'll have some fun in that middle section called with movement with some really low notes going down to low C. And now for some final thoughts on this etude. One red balloon represents the combination of two emotions, happy and sad. You can look at it from the perspective of a child who's happy to see their balloon flying freely into the sky, but also sad because now they no longer have the balloon. You can also connect to the notion of an adult seeing the balloon flying freely while reminiscing about their lost youth and freedom as a child. No matter how you connect to it, find a story that makes sense to you. We have all experienced joy and loss, and sometimes they coexist for a brief moment. Have fun with the music and enjoy it. To listen to a beautiful recording of this etude and all other etudes from this book, head over to my website, clarinetplayground.com. Trevor Stewart has recorded all 40 etudes beautifully, and they are available for purchase there on my website. Feel free to join us in the Clarinet Playground group on Facebook where we play and post for each other, and head over to my website at clarinetplayground.com for more fun music and books. Thank you so much. Pedal group with moving notes on each beat one. So we actually 